Okay, welcome to the talk. So my name is Sheng Wenzhen, and I'm from Taiwan. Unfortunately, Professor Jing Huang could not come here today, so I will present it by myself. And I will show, uh, today I will show some experience of using open source solution to build some, to build a vision edit software stake. And first I would like to start with motivations. So as the economists suggest that Taiwan is the most dangerous place on earth, Taiwanese has heavy needs on building our own national defense infrastructures, including UAVs. Also, the Russo-Ukrainian war has shown to the world that the UAV technology has changed the form of the modern warfare forever. Due to these reasons, Taiwanese government currently encourages cooperations to innovate and develop UAV systems, and that is the reason why we are currently doing research on UAVs. Also, there are some strengths of Taiwan in hardware and IC designs. With more than 30 years of development, Taiwan has one of the major hardware supply chain in the world, including hardware, including IC design house, power systems, industrial computer, and IC manufacturing. We believe that Taiwan has advantage to provide high quality but low cost hardware, which has potential in the UAV market for mass production. So throughout context with some Taiwanese UAV manufacturers from the side of university, we found that they have difficulties adopting open source solution in their product due to the following reasons. First, software hard hardware integration, especially for camera and gimbal systems, which requires a certain level of code modifications. Second, design of redundant data link design with 5G LTE and sub one gigahertz modules. Third, to deploy high level software stacks on low cost computational hardware, which we will elaborate it later. And finally, to choose the proper middleware, which means when is the right scenario to use ROS, LCM, or MuffLink. So we want to share our experience of resolving these problems and showcase a proof of concept design to the community. And here is the proposed software, we call it UAV Mission Server. At the right hand side, we have a 5G LTE module and a sub one gigahertz module. It's connected into the UAV Mission Server with a serial multiplexer. The serial multiplexer is essentially a router which routes the me message from different source to the flight control board at the left hand side, which in the picture here we have the Pix Hawk. Also, we support some MuffLink events to handle the remote control signals and gimbal and cameras, so we can use the remote controller to capture image or uh, saving videos we also integrate with GStreamer with a client, GStreamer client and GStreamer server to help streaming videos to the Q Ground Station or Mission Planner. So now I would, to, I would like to give an overview of the UAV system. Here we have a typical multi router UAV. The common building blocks for this kind of UAV is is first we have a RC receiver to re receive remote control signal, a flight control board, a GPS receiver, and a brushless motor, which is driven by the ele electronic speed controller, a LiPo battery, a camera, it can be with or without gimbal, and finally with a onboard computer with 5G LTE internet connectivity. Switch to another perspective. In the middle part, we have the flight control board, which is usually based on ARM Cortex-M. For example, a very popular microcontroller on Pixel hardware is the STM32H7, which supports 480 megahertz of computation power. And there are multiple sensors connect directly to the flight controller, including the initial measurement unit, the 
barometers, the magnetometer, and GNSS GPS receiver. On the left-hand side, we have a companion computer connected to the flight control board using USB or UART. And the camera and gimbal is connected to the companion computer, and the video can be streamed from the 5G LTE internet. And as a backup data link, we have a sub one gigahertz radio module. Now I would like to share some perspective of some opportunity for embedded Linux on UAVs. First, I would like to introduce the flight control mission, the task and the task for companion computers. For the flight controller part, we have we typically have a flight control task, including a guidance loop, a state estimator, a flight controller, and also with other tasks like data link task, with maybe with muff link, and data login, and shell task, and maybe more task. For the companion computer, it's usually running with a Linux operating system, so you can run high-level high algorithms on the Linux, and with 5G LTE data link, and currently there are many SOCs provided hardware accelerators like AI accelerators, so the applications can utilize these hardware accelerators to accelerate, accelerate applications like deep learning algorithms. So to list down the opportunities, uh, First, Linux is usually running on a companion computer along with a flight control board. This is because a flight the, the low-level control tasks are usually run on the flight control board with limited computation powers. However, what people actually want is to let the UAV perform high-level tasks, and these tasks are usually complicated and can only be run on Linux. So far as we know, there is no such unified project that combined all high-level needs of UAVs into a single project. That is, a pro single project that take care of camera control, gimbal control, video streaming, deep learning algorithm, localization and mapping, etc., which requires heavy works for developers to integrate all this package together. Now I would like to give a brief introduction for the software architecture of the UAV. First, here we have a major solution for deterministic or pre-planned missions. On the bottom, we have a state estimator which extracts extract useful information from the sensors and the state estimator provides information like position, velocity, angular velocity to the flight controller so the flight controller can minimize the error between the desired position and the current position or other variables like velocity or orientations. We also have a path following algorithm which provides smooth trajectory to the controller so the controller can minimize the position on these trajectories. Also, a path manager job is to store waypoints or high-level missions and provide these, provide these uh, waypoints to the path following algorithms. And last of all, we have a path planner, which may be shown as the right-hand side with the images. And the user can interact, interact with the software like QGround Control to click on the position they want to plan the missions, then ask the UAV to follow the trajectory as we discuss. Now, I would like to talk about some, some how we will think the UAV will be more smart. So I think the concept could be illustrated as follows. We first, we have a terminal, a laptop that can send command or receive information from the server and the server will uh, exchange data to the UAVs. Since UAVs are operate, usually operated in complex environments, so it requires uh, certain of perceptions and navigations or obstacle avoidance or even need to co coordinate with dif different UAVs together. And 
Along with this, we may have some AI-driven algorithms which help us to inspect or track in, and that might be what we are really interested in. First, let's talk about the data link part. So I will start with the protocol that's called MuffLink. And there are actually, there are many open source ground station and along of these, the most two popular ones are the QGround Control and Mission Planners. These two are both great softwares and they are both using MuffLink as, as the protocol, software protocols. So if you visit the website of the muffling, this, this is kind of what it will tell you. It is a very lightweight messaging protocol for communicati communicating with drones. And it is suitable for real-time control of UAV. And it follows a publish and subscribe model and point-to-point -point design. It does not restrict to, to any transport layer, so it can be sent through UART, UDP, TCP, CAN, etc. It is widely adopted by the UAV community, so it has great compatibilities. Also, it supports checksum, sign-in, and authentication, which ma makes MuffLink secu a secure, pro sec a secure pro protocol to use. To illustrate this, first we have a flight control board in the middle. Here we have a Pixhawk and the pixel can connect to the radio. So through the radio, we, using the MuffLink, the, the UAV can communicate with the ground station. And at the right, right button side, we have the video streaming from the companion computer with through the 5G LTE using the real-time streaming protocol, RTSP. And on the companion computer, we may want to run some high-level tasks. Since the design of these high-level tasks are usually modularized into different process or programs, for them to intercommunicate it to, by themselves, we may, we may choose ROS or LCM. So as we just discussed, the high-level high-level missions like navigation, perception, planning in these algorithms are typically modularized into different package, different process. We, we want to consider the right scenario to use ROS or SLC, and we will talk about this a little bit later. Now I would like to show some applications of these high-level algorithms. First, I would like to introduce the SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. So SLAM is a fundamental te technology that provides robots with its current location and surrounding maps. It is usually based on LIDAR, light radar, camera, inertial measurement unit, and maybe with even more sensors. But why bother using SLAM rather than just a GPS receiver? That is because the GPS signal is broadcasted from the satellite and it may be unreliable inside a door or under some obstructions. Also, many advanced algorithms, for example, of object avoidance algorithms, require SLAM to provide local, local location and mapping information. So to illustrate more, here we have a scenario of obstacle avoidance. So like we discussed earlier, these high-level algorithms are modularized into different package. To achieve obstacle avoidance, we first need navigation package with SLAM and maybe with perception software package to detect the obstacles, then to plan a optimal trajectory. And the, the optimal is in sense of maybe the minimal energy or the smoothness of the trajectory. Then finally, we send this we send this trajectory to the flight control board and ask the UAV to follow the trajectory, then avoid the obstacles. Next, I, I would like to talk about some interesting application that, that may be useful for using UAVs. First, we can see a growing trend of AIs in UAV applications. There are many, for, many useful applications like surveillance, patrol, monitoring, rescuing, or medicals, and etc. And also, some of current 
embedded platform now can run some small deep learning models within 10 to 30 hertz. So uh, also many SOC vendors nowadays provide mechanisms for, a for AI acceleration. For example, Qualcomm RB5 and RB6 are integrated with AI hardware AI accelerator. And for NVIDIA, we have a Tensor RT to optimize the neural network to, to adjust the parameters of the neural network. Now I would like to introduce some of the open source UAV autopilot. So there are many open source autopilot. Then the most popular ones are the PX, PX4 and Ardu pilot. So PX4 is originating in 2008. And the, the word PX4 usually refers to the software part of the autopilot. And the PixHawk is usually referred to the hardware name. It is hosted by the Drone Code Project and collaborated with Linux Foundation closely since 2014. PX4 also supports rich types of vehicles, including multi rotors, fixed wings, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, helicopter, rover, and more. It is written in C and based on the Nautix real time operating system. And finally, it is released under the BSD license. On the other hand, we have the ArduPilot. The ArduPilot is released in 2009, and the founders of ArduPilot also founded the company of 3D Robotics. It is originally, ba originally based on Arduino and later migrated to other platforms, so that is why it, was, it is called the ArduPilot. It is written in C and based on GBOS. GBOS is a real-time operating system with hardware abstraction layer. And interestingly, ArduPilot is compatible with many PixHawk hardware and released under GPL v3 license. For the, for maybe you may be curious, cur maybe for your curiosities, what is inside a autopilot? So first, inside an autopilot, we have a state estimator. So the goal of the state estimator is to obtain useful impo information like position, velocity, attitude, sensor bias from sensors like accelerometer, gyroscope, GPS receiver, magnetometer, and maybe more. There are many algorithms for state estimators like Kelman filter, complementary filter, gradient descent based me method, and more. Next, a feedback controller is to stabilize control variables to their desired set point through a feedback, feedback loop, just like the pictures illustrated. So the control variables of the multi-router UAVs com are commonly are the position, velocity, attitude, and angular velocity. Now I would like to talk about the way to choose a proper middleware. So ROS, Robot Operating System, is very popular. And originally, we have ROS1. It is based on TCP and UDP. And the basic unit for communication is called a node. The ROS1 is based on master and client architecture with limited real-time capabilities and not suitable for hardware, hard real-time applications. For ROS2 currently, ROS2 is based on DDS, Data Distribution, distribution Service, and it has improved real-time capabilities. Also offering quality of service allows you to adjust reliability, durability, and deadline for different kinds of service. Next, LCM, Lightweight Communication and Marshalling, SEM, was initially designed by MIT for research of autonomous vehicle in DARPA Urban Challenge. It's claimed to be low latency of inter-process communication with, with efficient broadcast, broadcast mechanism using UDP multicast. Like ROS, it supports multiple programming languages, but some of its features make it, make it maybe more favorable than ROS 
First, it requires only a few dependencies, so you, you can easily compile LCM by yourself. But usually, if you want to install ROS, you may just get the pre-built packages. For the platform, uh, LCM, LCM is considered to be more flexible, though like ROS, LCM support Linux, Mac OS, Windows. But uh, for ROS, ROS you, usually you, you can only download the pre-built package from the Ubuntu for ROS. If you want to compile ROS by yourself, it's, it's not an easy task. But for LCM, as long as your operating system is POSIX compliant, you, are, you can easily compile the LCM by yourself. So what we are talking here is actually a software stack that just fit the needs. Though ROS has rich features and a large software ecosystem behind it, Installing ROS on non-Ubuntu Linux distribution is actually not an easy job. This is because uh, also not all SOC vendors provide Ubuntu at its request license fee for the canonicals. So you may find some chipboards on the market, but as long as it does not support Ubuntu, you cannot install ROS easily. Also, for size considerations, Ubuntu and ROS are, are relatively large. For many cases, the designers only want a minimal configuration using build rule to just fit the needs. Under these considerations, LCM may be a good replacement. Next, I would like to share some issues when we are trying to do the system integrations. First, we found that the camera and gimbals are quite inconvenient during integrations. First, the camera interface, uh, there are many, many types of interface we can find. First is USB, Ethernet, MIP, CSI, etc. Then gimbal interface, we have USB or UART. Though there are some open standards like op Storm, 32, which is an open source gimbal design, it is not a unified standard, so not, not all products will use this. Also, in reality, the camera and gimbal may be decoupled, and so you may buy a single camera or a single gimbal, or maybe you can buy a product with camera integrated with gimbal, so the case is quite complicated. Now, even if you have a camera that is capable of doing streaming with video, it may not utilize the hardware acceleration mechanisms provided by the SOC. Also, due to these inconvenience problems, the developers may need to write some simple drivers in user space before developing their own applications like computer vision or deep learning algorithms. Second, I would like to talk about the redundant data link channels and we, how we resolve this is using the concept called the muffin router and there is a great talk, you can search for it. And as, as a safety critical system, robust communication is very important for UAVs. And one common approach is to offer extra backup channels for the UAV for example, to combine 5G LTE with sub one gigahertz radio. And a, a MuffLink router may be solve the such problems. It receives byte data from multiple ports and only forwards the entire message once it's decoded successfully. So let's back to our system. We have the, so we have this reference design as a, as a proof of concept project. It supports RTSP video streaming using GStreamer. It integrates with MouthLink to interact with ground stations to support image capturing, vid video capturing, gimbal control, and camera control. We also attempt to implement a hardware abstraction layers for the camera and gimbal, gimbal devices since they may be since there are many different interfaces like USB, UART, Ethernet, and many more, we also allow this system also allow redundant data links using the concept called the MuffLink router we just introduced. 
And currently, we implement with 5G LTE and sub-1 gigahertz radio telemetry. There are two similar projects if you are interested. The first is called a muffling camera manager, which is quite interesting since it, it is written in Rust. However, the project is, has different features than us. Uh, it only takes care of the camera, but we also take care of the, uh, gimbals and data link and attempt to design and hardware abstraction layers. Also, the drone code camera manager is another project, but it is deprecated now. So this is the UAV mission server as we just discussed. Finally, I want, to, I want to share some related and future work we may work on. We are also interested in multi-core integrations on single SOC to run the flight control software. So currently, some SOC vendors start to offer single SOC with ARM Cortex-A plus Cortex-M cores, multi-cores. For example, STM32MP15, it offers a A7 core running at 800 megahertz with M4 core at 209 megahertz. It is quite appealing to some entry-level products with some basic internet connectivity, for example, doing video streaming. And now we are working on a lightweight and highly customized flight control software to build such a system and may release the source code in the future. And this is my talk. Thank you for listening. So is there any questions? Yes. Uh, so, in I guess under what you would call battlefield conditions, the yes. 5G link, is that usually they're using their own antenna instead of like public infrastructure? Yes. Oh, so you mean what if in the battlefield there is no 5G internet, what should we do? Is yeah. It... yeah, basically. Uh, so, currently the infrastructure of telecommunication is based on 5G, but maybe later we can have 6G with satellite telecommunication system. That be a, a be maybe a op option. And we just want to demonstrate some concept of mixing different sorts of data link channels. Okay, so like for example, in the, you were talking about the Russian Ukrainian war, um, those FPV links, are they like radio? I think they are radio, uh, I think they extend their antenna and transmit data using maybe Wi-Fi and some peer radios. Yeah. Okay, cool. Also, you mentioned about the Russo-Ukrainian war. So in my talk, I mentioned about the low cost of low, uh, the, the concept of low cost hardware. That is, so this is maybe appealing for uh, for applications in the battlefields. Thanks. What was the hardware that you designed the uh, UAV mission um, server for? Uh, we are currently using the Qualcomm RB5 hardware. Um, so you mentioned this LCM versus ROS. Um, you are using LCM now, or is that an? We're we just doing a comparison here because we are actually considering using LCM in future projects. Okay, because then LCM sounds to me like more like a middleware where ROS brings the whole ecosystem with reference frames and sensor fusion like that. So. I think ROS is more than just the communication because then you could also just use DDS or other middleware. That's right. So as I mentioned, many Taiwanese uh, UAV manufacturers nowadays want to produce low-cost low cost UAVs, they, but they don't need the full ROS software and the, the huge ecosystem. They only want just a part of it. So we want to build a minimal configuration. That is why we are considering using LCM here. Okay, thanks. OK. 
Okay, thank you.